Hello and welcome back to my channel and to this next video of the Canix video series. Let us quickly summarize what we learned so far. We got to know to the physical structure of a Canix network, the topology, so we can hook up our components so that they can communicate with each other. We also got to know to the physical address so we can address devices with it. But what we still need is how we can get the information from the devices. So for example, the temperature from the temperature sensor. And how we can achieve this, we will see after the intro. Group objects are the interface between bus and bus device on the other side. All information provided by a KNX device is represented as a group object in the EDS. So this means, for example, in the case of a sensor, the information of pressing the button, the temperature or the humidity is represented as a group object. And in the case of an actuator, the individual channel functions are represented as a group object. So switching, blind movement or dimming for channel 1, for example. So this is how the information of a device or switching options are transferred to the bus. Now this may now sound more complicated than it really is. Here we have the example of a dimming actuator with two dimming outputs. As you can see, we have the group object in the middle between bus wire and bus device. And for each channel, we now have multiple group objects, each for their own function. So first of all, we have a group object for switching the channel one or two on and off. Then we have a group object for dimming channel one or two. And we also have a group object for the dim value. So there we can specify a value and then the dimming actuator turns the light to this specified value. Now, in practice, we have much more group objects depending on the parameterization of the device and the device itself. So, for example, in practice, we would also have feedback objects, log objects, etc. What you can also notice is that each group object has its own data type. And this makes sense because the information for switching is much smaller. It's simply on and off than the dimming value itself. There we need to send a value between 0 and 100%. So each group object has a data type associated to it. In the case of switching, one bit. In the case of the dimming value, we have a size of one byte. And for dimming, well, there we have the values dimming up, dimming down, dimming stop. Well, there we have a size of four bit. Now that we saw the theoretical approach for group objects, let's take a look at the EDS6 to see them in practice. So I am back here in the practice project from the last video. And first of all, I want to clean it up. So therefore I will delete the couplers as we don't need them. And then I will put the switching actuator inside the line. Now we have the switching actuator in the line and the area, I will change it to the medium type IP so that we have it like in a normal setup. So we have an IP area, a twisted pair line, and inside of the twisted pair line, we have the switching actuator. Now I will also import a push button sensor. As you can see here, we have this clicks push button sensor, which I will import into the line. And now you can already see the group objects of the switching actuator. I will close the catalog for now mark the switching actuator and here you can see I have opened up the group objects. And what we can see is that we have eight group objects. And the switching actuator or this simulated switching actuator consists of eight different channels. And by the description you can see that these group objects represent the function of switching on or off the corresponding channel. So channel one, on or off. I can also enable 
additional group objects by going into the parameters of the device. So for example, I can enable a feedback object. With this, we get the information of the egg trader if it was able to turn on its output channel or if it is broken. And now you can see for the first channel, I have two group objects. First of all, we still have the on off object so that we can turn on and off the channel. But we also now have the object of the info, so the feedback of the channel. So these are the functions of the device which we get as group objects. Now let us go to our push button sensor, this click sensor. Now you must know that this sensor consists of eight push buttons and here we can see eight group objects and now each of them are marked as switching on off. So the standard or default setting of the push button sensor is that with each button we can turn on and turn off the light and this is represented or the information is represented here as a group object. Now I can also change it in the parameters so that with the first buttons I want to dim now and now you can see that we have other group objects. Now we have for example the group object on off because we still want to turn the light on and off but also dimming control for dimming up and dimming down the light. And now you can also see the different meter types we have. Here we have a length of one bit so on and off. You can also see it down below here switching. The, the value 0 means off, the value 1 means on. And if I go down here to dimming control, we can see a length of 4 bit. Dimming control is the data type. And there we now have additional values like dimming up, dimming down, etc. So there we get the information of the push button sensor as a group object. So now that we know how we get the information of the sensor and how we get the functions of an actuator, we need to combine those two. And how we do that, we will see in the next video with the group addresses. I hope you enjoyed this video. If so, consider a like and subscribe to the channel to get notified for new videos. If you have any questions left, feel free to ask in the comment section and I will see you in the next video.